So what is microneedling? Microneedling is actually quite popular as a procedure for acne, acne scarring, general anti-aging, and collagen boosting. It's a minimally invasive method which is used for scarring on the face, even on the body. It's also known as collagen induction therapy, so this can help with skin rejuvenation, skin tightening, and even hair growth. So if you struggle with scarring from acne, keloids, or other causes, then this video is going to walk you through some of the best ways that you can make the most of your skin healing using microneedling. It's a really cozy and rainy day and I've got eight main tips for microneedling aftercare to help you with your progress. You'll want to follow these tips for the next one to two weeks, particularly because with microneedling, what we are doing is creating micro channels in the skin. Think of them as very tiny wounds where it causes the body to rush white blood cells and increase the rate of healing. So this is good news for us. So like I said, you'll want to give one to two weeks following these tips. Some of them may vary, maybe two to three days, but if you want the best for your buck, then keep on watching. The first one is to avoid intensive exercise. Because of the sweating and the oils getting on the skin through exercise, your skin will be more prone to clogging, and this is not what we want after microneedling. The second thing is to avoid smoking and alcohol. Just because we are focusing on promoting healing, we don't only want to be nourishing the skin, and I'm gonna be touching on that in next tips to come, but also nourishing from the inside. We wanna promote the healing by hydrating, eating good whole foods, and so that is one of the best ways that I like to support my body in healing. No matter what it is, whether it's microneedling, if I get a cold, I treat it basically the same. So stick to your fruits, veggies, get all those good greens nourishing from the inside out. My third tip is to avoid makeup. I typically will avoid putting any sort of cosmetic makeup on my skin for the next two to three days. But if you're using the 0.5 millimeter banisher, 3.0 or 2.0, then you only need to avoid putting makeup on for the next eight hours because downtime is really, really short. So that's personal and completely up to you. And it might also be a really good opportunity to wash or clean your makeup brushes. What's great about microneedling with the banisher at home instead of in clinic is one downtime is so short, it's so quick. I like to do it at the end of the day or at night before going to bed so that I can heal during the night and the next day I can do my usual skincare and makeup if you want. But another great thing about the banisher and the low and the minimal downtime is that you can repeat the process every two to three weeks or even once a week, depending on what your skin type is and where you're at with your skin at the moment. But I typically like to do it every two weeks. So when we have these micro wounds and micro channels in the skin, our skin will absorb product so much quicker and so much deeper in the skin. So this is really good news if we're using the right products, but not the best news if we're using products that are not the best. And we're gonna to touch on this in next tips as well. So some things to keep in mind is to avoid getting any sort of harsh chemicals, artificial colors. So what you wanna do is leverage this time to get the best nourishing skincare into your skin. Number four is you'll want to avoid any active ingredients that might increase irritation in the skin. So things like retinol or harsh vitamin Cs. So one of the best things that I like to use after microneedling directly after immediately after is the Banish Serum, which does have vitamin C in it, but it's not harsh. It helps to lock that moisture in and helps to get absorbed really, really quickly post-treatment and needling. And I just love it. It's so soothing. And the next day I get that morning glow. It is the best thing ever. Number five is to avoid exfoliators. This is both chemical and absolutely physical. You will want to avoid any sort of physical exfoliating scrub. 
your skin is so sensitive, we wanna support the healing, and so avoiding chemical as well, so things like your glycolic acids, salicylics, your AHAs and BHAs, you'll want to avoid that. So tuck that away if that is part of your skincare routine for a little bit coming out of your microneedling session. Number six is to avoid direct sunlight, especially intense sunlight. Um, so this is why I really like to do my micro needling sessions at night because I immediately, to support that healing, am going to sleep. So I'm resting, I'm recovering, and I'm also in the dark. So I'm doing it at night and I'm not exposing my skin to direct UV light. Now, some ways if you need to go outside, of course it's important to get sunshine every day, to wear protective gear like a hat, sunglasses will help, and your SPFs too. So a nice natural sunscreen in order to physically support the skin barrier and support your skin post-treatment. The aim of the game is to heal faster, to use the tools that we have, and to really prolong the effects of our micro needling session. There's nothing worse than investing your time, in investing your money, which by the way, with Banish and using the Banisher, it comes to less than a coffee per session, which is incredible, but still you're investing your time, you're investing your dollar, and you want to make the most of it and really see results. So this is a way to heal faster, repair at a faster rate, make the most of it, and make the most of this recovery time for your skin. Number seven, so some of the products that I like to use post-treatment, especially coming out of it in the next few days, is cooling and soothing aloe vera. Aloe vera that cools and soothes the skin. Banish has my absolute favorite, which is the Fighter Gel. If you are someone that grows aloe vera at home, I grew up with aloe vera at home. After a sunburn, it's great, so it's really good for sensitive skin, and it just promotes that healing. And if you want to moisturize and support that locking of the moisture in the skin, if you tend to have dry skin or you live in a dry area, then something like the vitamin C cream is going to be really, really, really good for that supportive um, healing of the skin barrier and keeping the moisture in. It is very lightweight, which I love. It not only has vitamin C, it has vitamin C, vitamin E, and ferulic acid, which is basically an antioxidant that comes in plants and like what I said earlier, getting that nourishment from the inside and bringing it out, and also nourishment from the outside and bringing it in. And again, it's very gentle on the skin. This is the type of product and skincare that you wanna focus on coming out of a treatment. Number eight is something that I have to tell myself all the time, and it's to avoid touching your face. We are touching things all the time. Like I mentioned, your skin is absorbing so much quicker and it's going through this healing. It's not like you're going to touch a wound all the time. You want to avoid touching your face. There are micro wounds, micro channels that have been created and you want to support that healing as the skin strengthens again. Avoid touching your face and be patient with the process. So trust the process, it takes some time. Mine took months and over the years I continue to use microneedling as a method and a tool to support collagen production, elasticity of my skin, the quality of my skin, but also really help remove hyperpigmentation, dark spots, and even some scarring that might come up if I have a breakout here and there. So take these tips with you, your skin will definitely thank you for it.